a YouTube video that I'm going to use. I'm going to work with the board because I want to not work with that little pen iPad thingy uh, for a little bit, kind of shake things up. Um, OK, so let's let's get into it. So this is the problem that we have. We have the following table represents the number of labor hours it will take the US and China to produce either one unit of steel or one electric vehicle. So this is an input problem, right? Because we can see um, that these are input data, right? So it's telling you that if the United States wanted to produce one unit of steel, they need six hours to do it. If China wanted to produce one unit of steel, they would need six hours. Um, one hour for electric vehicles for the US, two hours for China. Pretty simple. But nothing big now, nothing big yet. With this data, however, we can calculate what is some what is called absolute advantage. An absolute advantage is um, essentially uh, it's not as important of a concept as comparative advantage, which we're going to try to uh, find uh, shortly. But absolute advantage, um, um, a, a country has an absolute advantage in the production of a good or service if it can produce that good or service um, with less inputs. So which country has the um, absolute advantage in the production of steel. You can see that the US can produce one unit of steel in six hours or using six labor hours. China can produce one unit of steel using six uh, labor hours. So which country has the absolute advantage in the production of steel? I'm going to list my friends Liana and Yuli to help me answer these questions. So which country has the absolute advantage in the production of steel? Six hours or six hours? It's, she's, she said it under her breath because she was not sure, but she's right. She said neither. Right? It's ambiguous. At this point, it's ambiguous. Now, Yuli, which country has the absolute advantage in the production of electric vehicles? We have the US that can produce electric vehicles in one hour. And then we have China that can produce electric vehicles in two hours. So which has the absolute advantage? Which can produce it with lower effort? The US or China? Um, the US. Yes, she said it right, the US. US has the absolute advantage in the production of electric vehicles. But this does not mean that they should specialize in the production of any of these goods or service. We did a problem today in class where we saw that in that problem, China had the absolute advantage in the production of both electric vehicles and um, um, steel. So we need to find what is called comparative advantage. And specifically, to determine who has the comparative advantage in what uh, will allow us to determine who should specialize in what. Um, and the way we find comparative advantage is first we have to find the per unit opportunity cost, um, meaning the opportunity cost, what someone gives up uh, to produce um, a specific good or service. But we're at a problem. We're given input data. We need, we can do two things. We can convert this input data to output data, or we can work with this input data using a formula um, um, called IOU um, to, to find um, the per unit um, opportunity cost. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and shorten this video a bit because I want to make this short, digestible, and really kind of beneficial to you. Um, oh, look, I've got my, my MLK quote up here. One has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Um, because This has nothing to do with the econ part, but yesterday was MLK Day. That's a very good line from Letter from Birmingham Jail, which was one of our foundational documents in AP government. Dang, dang, I look spiffy, I look spiffy. I've been doing a, a workout program. Very intense. Very few people can do this on the planet. Just kidding. OK, so let's go ahead and use this formula to convert this input data. And this is the formula. Really, I want you to pay attention to this formula. 
there's two ways we can think of it. So if we're given input data, meaning six labor hours, six labor hours to produce uh, one unit of steel, one hour to produce electric vehicles, two hours to produce. So we're not given the actual output data, like what actually comes out of these different inputs, the production data. We can use this formula called IOU. And so other under. One way, and I think this is actually more effective, is to find the per unit opportunity cost of a good in the numerator. You put, this is how I learned it when I was taking principles of economics, of microeconomics. When you're given input data, this is important. When you're given input data to find the per unit opportunity that's a good when you're given input data, you can use this little formula. You can use input other under, meaning the other value of what you could have produced under the fraction, um, and then naturally what you're producing at the top, um, the input numbers, or I think this is a more effective formula. Per unit opportunity cost of a good, what you get, what you give up. Again, importantly, when you are given input data. And so let's go ahead and calculate the per unit opportunity cost of this. Create a chart. Okay, so this is a per unit opportunity cost. US, China, steel, electric cars. So if you decided to produce electric cars, you're gonna put in the numerator to find the per unit opportunity cost, six hours. And then in the denominator, what you give up. So the other value, find one hour. This should give you six. Six is the for is the per unit opportunity cost of cars. So that means for every one unit of steel, you're getting, you're giving up six cars. That's the formula. And that makes sense because if you're spending six hours, if it only takes one hour to produce, if it only takes one hour to produce an electric car, right? And you're spending six hours instead producing one unit of steel, you're giving up six units of electric cars. So we again use this per unit opportunity as a good formula, what you get up, what you get over what you give up. All right, now I'm gonna have some assistance. For China, using this formula, either input under under or this one, right? They're the same formula, right? This isn't like a trick question. How what is the per unit opportunity cost of China deciding to produce steel? So let's plug it into the formula. So we put the value of what we get in the top. So if China decides to produce steel, six hours, and then in the denominator, we put what we give up, two hours. Exactly right, Yuli. What's this simplify? Six divided by two. Exactly. Three cars. So this is the opportunity cost, right? And opportunity cost is the best alternative. What you gave up 
right? And so this formula helps us find the per unit opportunity cost for every unit of steel that China produces, they're giving up three cars. For every unit of steel that the US produces, they're giving up six cars. So we can see already which country has the comparative advantage, which country has the lowest opportunity cost by producing steel. Is it the US or China? Which country has the lowest opportunity cost if they decide to produce steel? Because it's three is lower than six. And so this makes sense because this says they have the comparative advantage in the production of steel. And what this essentially means is that for China, they give up less if they decide to produce steel than the United States does. And so they should produce it. And the US should produce the other good, which is electric cars, and they should trade because it will expand the production possibilities um, of both countries. Pretty simple. But we want to make sure uh, we don't have to go through this because we already, if China has a comparative advantage in the production of cars, then the US should have the comparative advantage in the production, or I'm sorry, if China has a comparative advantage in the production of steel, the US should have the comparative advantage in the production of cars. We want to make sure. And so the way that we make sure, uh, we can make sure right here, Calculate the opportunity cost, use this little formula. So we can electric cars, go to electric cars. Um, don't have to put units here, right? Because this is a five by six. One six units of steel. I don't know what a unit of steel is. Try, try to put units. So this means that for each electric car, because that's what per unit opportunity cost means, for each electric car the US produces, they give up one six units of steel. And then for this one, um, it should be using the formula two divided by six, which is one third units of steel. Okay, so as you can see, and this makes sense, this, this is the reciprocal of this number. This is also the reciprocal of this number. Makes sense, but if you don't, you, you can memorize this, right? It's a simple math shortcut. If you, ca if you calculate, you know, the per unit opportunity cost of, you know, one good per country or per person or per, per business, you have technically the per unit opportunity cost because you can just you know use the reciprocal. But if not, you can go through the process. So we see that the comparative advantage is one six units of steel. Um, one six is a lower opportunity cost. You give up less um, than one third units of steel. Um, so if China decided to specialize in electric cars, they would give up one third of a unit of steel. Since the US decides to specialize in electric cars, they give up one six units of steel. And so they have the, op the lowest opportunity cost, so therefore they have the comparative advantage and they should specialize in that good or service. Pretty simple. Now, if you want, I can draw the PPF uh, to demonstrate the gains from trade. Um, I'm personally not going to draw the PPF right now because I want to keep this YouTube video short, but I want to show you. Um, how to calculate opportunity cost of a good or service when that good or service is, um, or when you're given output data. And so in particular, let's take again, the US and China example. US and China example. Steel. And we'll say that this represents max number can produce in a day, a year, it doesn't matter. And we'll say that this one, let's just make this eight. So this is 10, this is 8, and this is 2. 
Yeah, sure. For this, we would use the formula output other over, or not the formula, it's just a mental shortcut. I should say that the formula is, no, it's not. Or, both of these are to calculate the per unit opportunity cost, right? Because that's what we want to uh, be, what we want to be able to find the comparative advantage per unit opportunity cost of a good when you're given output data is you're going to put the number the output data of what you give up over what you get and i should note that that's what you're doing here you're putting the input data of what you get over what you give up to find the per unit opportunity cost we can explain the logic of why this works um, but we've explained the logic of why this works in class. Um, now I'm just giving you the, the shortcut. So output over per unit opportunity cost of good, what, get, what you give up and what you get. So let's see here. So to find the per unit opportunity cost of a good or service, as Mr. Diaz is also watching Mrs. Flores' class, dang, teacher of the year, doing multiple things at once because I'm amazing and I don't want to pause this YouTube video because I don't know how to do that. But putting the output data value of what you give up, make sure to put units on the actual test when you're, you're doing this. Um, let's say you wanted to produce steel. What would you give up in the production of steel? If you're uh, the United States, you give up cars, right? So what you give up goes in the numerator, what you get goes in the denominator, and then you get one fourth, and one fourth is the per unit opportunity cost. So for each unit of steel you produce, you're losing one fourth of the car. Go on what you give up if you produce electric cars. So eight units of steel divided by two. So you give up four units of uh, steel then with china again what you give up in the numerator so eight tenths simplified is four fifths of cars and then likewise because remember these are just the reciprocals units of steel, right? So these formulas really work, and we can find the comparative advantage here. Whoever has the lowest opportunity cost, so it's pretty clear. Um, one fourth is lower, uh, so the United States, one fourth cars, the United States gives up less cars than China does, so they have a comparative advantage in cars. Um, And then China has a comparative advantage because they have the lowest opportunity cost in electric cars. Um, lowest opportunity cost um, of producing, uh, lowest per unit opportunity cost of producing electric cars. Because we see five forces lower than four units of steel. So they have the comparative advantage in the production of steel, or the production of cars. The US has a comparative advantage in the production of steel, and voila. We are done. And then we find out who should specialize in what. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead.